In our last video, we offered theories as to why collision repairers are so confused about scanning and ADAS calibrations. In this video, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of scanning versus calibration, next in the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. The recommendation or requirement to do a scan is common sense for any shop. With the complexity of electronics, you as a repair facility better know what is wrong or could be wrong in that vehicle. Whether the vehicle is brand new or has 100,000 miles, failure to know what's damaged to the electronics can be an expensive headache when it comes time to repair the vehicle. The scan is gonna give you the DTCs indicating what has been happening or what is happening inside the vehicle's electrical system. The codes will lead you to where to look for conditions from the collision that need to be repaired and give you insight as to what pre-existing issues the vehicle might have had prior to the collision. Today's electronics are so integrated and fused to other systems in the vehicle that something seemingly unrelated will actually impede the vehicle's repair. The fusion of electronics or the codependency of systems has led to interesting challenges for shops and technicians in all aspects of repair. In the world of auto glass replacement, the pre-repaired scans prior to windshield replacement have been noting failures in cameras attached to the ADAS functions, which have required the replacement of the cameras to do calibrations. Without having the pre-repaired scans to show DTCs prior to the replacement, the cost to replace these expensive cameras would fall on the shop due to the thought process that they were damaged during repairs. When used correctly, a pre-repair scan or post-repair scan report listing DTCs will tell us many things. From the DTCs and some good diagnostics, we'll find communication errors and reasons, damaged modules, wire damage, connector damage, programming needs, pre-existing damage, warranty issues, flood damage, corrosion issues, aftermarket accessories interference, once we learn what will be necessary to repair the vehicle and document on the estimate, we may need to do some research on what calibrations will be required. Calibrations are used to either re-zero, relearn, or validate that sensors in the vehicle are seeing correctly and seeing in the zone in which they're supposed to be looking. It's like using a scale. Many assume that it is set as zero when you start. When you verify it is and see the scale is registering 10 pounds on the readout with no weight applied, you know it's out of calibration. Even though a scan will tell us a great deal about the electrical condition or problems in the vehicle, it's not able to tell you that it's out of calibration. But a calibration when done correctly will have a scan done prior to the calibration process to be sure all components are communicating and operating as a network. The calibration will then be performed followed by a dynamic system verification, drive cycle, or other industry term that validates the systems are correctly working while driving. This will be followed by a post-repair scan to verify that no DTCs are reoccurring. The calibration itself needs to be researched to find out what requirements or pre-qualifications must be done prior to that calibration. A series of targets are used and placed in specific locations in relationship to the vehicle and which sensor is being validated. It should also be noted what the OE requires of the location and surface the vehicle is resting on prior to the calibration process to be completed. Even slight angles and uneven surfaces may compromise calibrations. Some pre-requirements to note include, if an alignment is needed, it must be done prior to calibration, may require an alignment, may require a full tank of gas, air pressure validation on tires, floor level, light conditions, surroundings, bumper cover removed, pre-alignment of brackets prior to reinstalling bumper cover or grill, always software, aftermarket accessories. Many people assume that as long as it calibrates successfully, it's good to go, but that is not necessarily true. Recent testing has shown that a vehicle that calibrated successfully, but to the wrong vehicle specs, did not perform correctly in the ADAS testing. It cannot be stressed enough that the vehicle's ADAS is relying on who is performing the calibration to know and verify exactly where those targets are being placed according to OE specs. Sometimes calibrations are not successful due to all the items mentioned before. Add to the equation that sometimes we see technicians trying to be resourceful. Here are some things that have been seen recently. 
brackets straightened instead of replaced, zip ties instead of bolts, sensors upside down, cameras not mounted correctly, plastic repair over sensors, multiple layers of paint, calibrations performed in parking lots that don't have OE specs, lighting and shadows, and obstacles. I'm sure anyone watching this can add to that list because we've all seen our share of improvisation on many repairs. The automotive industry is facing many challenges, from technician and office staff shortages, to learning what will be needed to repair today's vehicles, to what is going to happen tomorrow. New calibration solutions are entering the market every day. Therefore, the entire industry will need to do their research to adapt to this new world. I'm Jason Stahl from the AirPro Collision Diagnostics Garage. Thanks for watching.